Hello, welcome to yet another episode of Real Chemistry. I'm still Dr. Morris, and today we're going to be talking about molecular geometry in lone pairs. Now, molecular geometry is importantly really different from electron geometry. So if you're not familiar with electron geometry, go ahead and check out the show, which I'll, or the episode which I'll link to below first, and then come back here. So what's the difference between electron geometry and molecular geometry? Electron geometry describes the position of our electrons around our central atom, whereas molecular geometry describes the position of our atoms. We can think about the difference from the Lewis structures below. If we look on the left, we notice it has one, two, three regions of electron density, that is bonds or lone pairs. And it has zero lone pairs. All those are atoms around it. Meanwhile, on the right, we still have one, two, three regions of electron density. Because remember, lone pairs or bonds count for those. But we have one lone pair. And that changes the way our molecule will appear. What we would call these guys is on the right, we would call it bent. The molecular geometry over here is bent. Because it looks sort of like a bent molecule. On the right, we would call it trigonal planar. The same thing we would call our electron geometry for something like this because they're in a plane around a triangle. So these two guys notice have the same electron geometry. Both of them because they have three regions of electron are both trigonal planar in terms of electron geometry. But in terms of molecular geometry they're different. One's bent because it just has two atoms around the center atom and the other is trigonal planar in terms of its molecular geometry because it has three atoms around the central atom. What we're going to do is we're going to build up this chart that looks at all the different combinations of the number of lone pairs and the number of regions of electron density. This can be a lot to learn. It's important to try to understand why each thing is named the way it is and that helps you remember these different shapes. Alright, so first and the most straightforward is if we have two regions of electron density, well, then there's no way to have lone pairs and have a central atom, right? If I replace one of these guys with, with a lone pair, then I no longer have a central atom. I just have two atoms as a diatomic molecule. So there's not even a one lone pair option here. We just have a linear molecule. Our atoms are arranged in a linear fashion with a 180 degree bond angle. Now, if I have three regions of electron density, just like I did at the beginning, I can replace one of those atoms with a lone pair and still have a central molecule. And that gives me two different shapes. Like I said before, one's trigonal planar and one is bent or angular. What you'll see is that the geometry, when there's zero lone pairs, is the same for the electron and ge molecular geometry. In other words, if I look at the electron geometry for these guys, it'll be linear and trigonal planar. If I look at the molecular geometry, it's linear and trigonal planar. They have the same names. Where the names are different is once we start to add lone pairs. All right, let's look at four regions of electron density. Well, the first one, as we've come to expect, with zero lone pairs here, is called tetrahedral because there's no lone pairs. And so it looks exactly like our electron geometry because molecules, or atoms rather, are at every single spot of electron density. Now, if we replace one of those atoms with a lone pair, like we did here. Now, our center atom's there, and what we've made is a little triangular pyramid, and so that's called trigonal pyramid. So this is a trigonal pyramid. If we get two regions that are lone pairs, two lone pairs, then once again we just have a bent shape. So notice the bent shape up here and the bent shape down here are similar, they're both bent, but they have slightly different bond angles. And the reason they have slightly different bond angles is this one has two lone pairs and that one has one lone pair. One important thing to be thinking about here is remember that all of our electrons are negative and they're all repelling each other. So the bond angles are really determined by the fact that you have electrons repelling each other. And when I have two lone pairs repelling those bonds, it squeezes them together compared to just one lone pair. And so that's why that bond angle gets smaller. All right, so that's are different molecular geometries for two, three, and four regions of electron density. Now, let's take a look at five regions and then six regions, and that's it. So, first, if we have five regions of electron density and zero lone pairs, then we get trigonal bipyramidal. Again, it's the same name as the electron geometry. And that's because all of our different spots where we have electrons have bonds. 
If we add one lone pair, we get a fun shape. So notice that's like having our guy here, 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 and here with a center atom there. And then this guy's a lone pair. Well, if you notice, it sort of makes like a sawhorse or a seesaw. So if that's the little center piece of the, of the teeter-totter, then this is the teeter-totter which goes across it, and you can think about it going back and forth like this. So we call it a seesaw or a sawhorse. All right, then if you remove another electron, I'm sorry, another atom, so you get two lone pairs, we get what's called T-shape. And that should be pretty straightforward as to why it's called T-shape, because there's a T. Lastly, if we remove three of our bonds and place them three lone pairs, then what we get is linear. We just go straight from top to bottom, and it looks like a line. So for five regions of electron density, we can have zero lone pairs, and we get tet trigonal bipyramidal. One lone pair, we get see sawhorse or seesaw. Two lone pairs, and we have T-shaped. Three lone pairs, and we have linear. All right, last set of molecular geometries. When we have six regions of electron density, we have octahedral if we have octahedral if all of those are atoms. The second we get rid of one of our atoms and, and replace it with a lone pair, we get a square pyramid. There's a base that's a square, and then it goes up to that central atom, and that gives us a square pyramid. If we remove two atoms and put lone pairs, then we just get a square. And it's called square planar, a square and a plane. If we remove three, so there's our three lone pairs. We've removed three atoms and replaced them lone pairs. We once again get T-shaped. So again, that is similar to the T-shape we get up here. So you can repeat your molecular geometries even with different numbers of uh, electron regions. All right, the very last one is we get rid of four, lone, four atoms and replace them with lone pairs. And we get linear, just straight top to bottom, just like we saw linear up here. Okay, so that's a lot. A lot of this is memorizing what molecular shape you get if you have a certain number of regions of electron density and a certain number of lone pairs. And that's how we can figure out what the molecular geometry is for any of these molecules. So thank you for watching this episode. If you have any questions, please ask them below.